it pretty fascinating when I see some projects that use a particular part of LLM and then make some improvements in overall science. Like in this particular case, this is a new project called Word Llama. This is a lightweight NLP toolkit. And for those who do not know NLP, in this particular context, NLP stands for natural language processing. It involves a lot of different things. For example, sometimes you have to find similarity between two sentences. Sometimes you have to do fuzzy du duplication. So, if, But one of the most important thing than accuracy is how efficient you can do these tasks. And these are business critical tasks. A lot of these tasks have real world impact. I'm not saying that LLMs don't have impact. But these tasks power a lot of things that you do not know. A lot of data science teams behind the scenes are using this. So one such project that I recently came across is Word Llama, which is releasing a new tool, a new Python package that is going to help you do these kind of tasks. And the way Word Llama built is exactly why I've made this video. If you were to install, this is just simply pip install Word Llama. And to make it further easier, I've created Gradio demo, deployed it on Hugging Face Spaces. So I'll share the link in the YouTube description for you to play with. But if you were to see the theory of how somebody has built it, it's pretty fascinating. So let's start by one by one. Word Llama is a utility for NLP and word embedding model that recycles components from large language models to create efficient and compact word representations such as Glove, Fastex, I think is from Facebook, word to wake Five years before anybody who wanted to build an embedding, you might have heard people using word to wake You can go see a lot of Kaggle competitions like Quora, similarity matching, Quora duplication. I'm not sure how many of you are deep into Kaggle, but if you are into ML, then you should definitely check it into Kaggle. So these are like the word representations that people used to use to create embeddings. And from that embeddings, people used to use a lot of different things like similarity finding and, uh, you know, uh, semantic search and a lot of other things. One such library that might come into your mind is SBIRT and uh, yeah, sentence transformers. So in this particular case, Word Llama begins by extracting the token embedding codebook from a state of the art LLM. In this case, Llama 370 billion example. But the one that we are going to use in this video is based on Llama 2 as far as I know. And training a very small contextless model in a general purpose embedding framework. So baseline, this is an embedding model. Word Llama improves on all MTEB benchmarks. So this is a benchmark that uh, evaluates these embedding models. So you would have heard like a lot of these models. For example, a very popular model a lot of people use from Sentence Transformer is all mini LM L6V2, which is smaller in size. Glow is another. We saw word to wake which is a legend in this particular space. Uh, so you might have heard about like this king plus man minus uh, female is equal to queen, something like that. I'm not saying it properly. Now, what this model, the biggest advantage here is this is substantially small. So if you compare it with Glove 300 dimension model, I think D here is dimension. Anyways, Glove 300 D. If you compare it, this model is just 16 MB, 16 megabytes for 256 dimensions versus Glove, which is 2 GB, greater than 2 GB. And it has a lot of advantages here, like uh, Matryoshka representation, just low CPU, uh, low resources recommend, uh, requirements. You don't need a lot of compute. And it's a NumPy only inference. That means it's lightweight and simple and a lot of other things. In short, this is a model that has been created from a bunch of, let's say models, uh, that is, uh, I think Llama 2 compatible models and the training nodes L2 SuperCAD, which is what we're going to use here. There is an L3 SuperCAD, which we are not going to use at this point. It has been trained from a batch size of 512 on a single A100 for 12 hours. So how do you use it? All you have to do is simply, you have to load the model. Okay. After you load the model, then you can just use all these API endpoints available here. So uh, methods to be precise. Word WL dot similarity, you can give two sentences, it can give you a similarity score. Then you've got the query, then you've got the candidates, then you can rank it based on the re-ranking system. The re-ranking is extremely popular these days. This is may not be like a cross encoder re-ranking. That's what mostly like when you see Cohere re-ranking and a lot of other re-ranking users. I'm not doing a comparison here, especially with re-ranking, but you can see some numbers here. So for example, uh, they've got different sizes, WL64, Word Lama 64, 128, 256, which is kind of the optimal here, 512, uh, 1024, and then Glove and the uh, Comni nose. And you have got all mini LM, which is the smallest in SBIRT series. Now, if you see re-ranking, this model scores 52, while uh, the best one probably in this particular case scores 58. Classification, this scores 58, and this one scores 63. Clustering, this one scores 33 
and uh, the all mini LM scores 42. So across all the benchmarks, you would see that this is a model that is decent on par. And a lot of business use cases require these models to be uh, small, nimble and extremely fast. And that is exactly why I decided to cover this model. You can also create embeddings and uh, you can store the embeddings. For example, you can take the embedding, have the embeddings in a particular shape in this particular case, uh, two by 64, and then use the embeddings later on for whatever reason that you want. So you can unpack the embedding here and then do like similarity matching and a lot of things. So if you're a company, let's say you want to do uh, something, a similarity matching, um, then you can use this and then store the embeddings every day, like a batch process and then use it and then do the similarity and help certain departments. Now enough of talking, I'm going to get into my Gradio application. I'm not going to explain the code here. The code is fairly simpler, um, almost like this, except Gradio elements. So what we're going to see is we're going to see a couple of examples. First one, we're going to do a similarity. One of the important thing is for you to calculate similarity, you need two sentences. And you might wonder what kind of business use cases where people would do similarity. One very useful case is if you are in an ITSM system, um, IT support, I don't know what is ITSM. I, I almost forgot what is ITSM. So it's like a uh, service now. So where there's a ticketing system, Zendesk, all these companies. One of the most important thing that you have to do is you have to filter similar tickets and then maybe close it automatically with the previous solution. This way your support engineers are not swamped. And Kaggle had multiple competitions for that. So sentence one, sentence two, I'm going to give an example. So I need a coffee. I need, I'm looking for a coffee shop. So this is sentence one, this is sentence two. We're going to calculate similarity. And this is running on free hugging face spaces, just CPU, not even GPU. Calculate similarity. And as you can see here, it has got 0.67. Now I'm going to type something completely random. I make YouTube videos. Technically, if this model works fine, the similarity should be much lesser than 0.5. And here you go. Yeah, 0.01. That means it doesn't have any similarity at all. Like it's rarely similar. So I can now say I make YouTube videos while drinking. Yeah, fine. Let's see. It's ideally supposed to increase because I need coffee and I've added caffeine here. So as you can see, this works pretty fine with similarities. Now you've got ranking documents. I've added examples for you to use it. So if you're coming to this application, a uh, Gradio application for the first time, you don't have to be worried. So I've got best programming languages and candidates here. So rank it and it is going to score the, um, the documents. So this is basically like your re-ranker here and uh, it's, it's just ranking uh, JavaScript, Java, Python, C++, no offense to uh, Java audience, but uh, I would never put Java or Python. So that's another thing. Looking for a restaurant, you want to re-rank it. What are the candidates you have got? I need food, I, I'm hungry, I want to eat. Let's find a place to eat. This is extremely helpful. Um, sometimes, let's say you have got a pool of documents. You are uh, retrieving 10 documents. After you retrieve 10 documents, sometimes it's very important for you to find the most similar or the most ranked document. And uh, you want to show like everything in a descending order. So not just one similarity score, but you want to rank them and then show. And uh, this has a lot of impact in e-commerce, how people show things and a lot of things. This is deduplication. Uh, you have got like a bunch of other things, like for example, apple, apple, orange, banana. If you're in India, of course, one thing you know, people use this example a lot. New Delhi, you've got Delhi, and then New Delhi without space. This is always a pain if you work with surveys and you can deduplicate it. So you can see that it deduplicated everything and then gave you new Delhi. This is what fuzzy deduplication is. It's very hard to do with a regular expression. And sometimes people just like build smaller models to do it. But fuzzy deduplication, like using these models can be extremely helpful. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into other examples. You can do it yourself. But this is an extremely helpful embedding. I would, I would call it embedding model. I'm not sure what exactly technically you would call it, but wherever you want to do embedding and do something out of it, this model is going to be extremely helpful. Or even if you do not want to do embedding, just you want to do classical NLP task. Like for example, you want to do clustering, you want to do re-ranking, you want to do classification, you want to do um, uh, deduplication, you want to do um, fuzzy similarity matching. In all these cases, ra ranking as well. In all these cases, this model could be extremely helpful. I'm not going by the benchmarks. For me, the primary objective of using this model in any production case is speed. And um, yeah, you are welcome to compare it with uh, 
other S bird models. And uh, let me know what you think about it. I'm not sure if this video is going to get any of the views, but I love this project. I'd love to see how people can take one facet of what we do in large language model and apply it to use cases, not necessarily text generation, but that can have like wide range of impact. So kudos to the developer star the repository. I'll also link the Gradio application that I built for you to play with this. See you in another video. Happy prompting.